everyone welcome to a new video this is the get to know me tag that i promised you guys in my previous video and for the people who are stopping here for the first time and are seeing the space for the first time welcome and i hope you like and enjoy this video and become part of our little family we are hoping to grow together and do not forget to subscribe to like the video and also to turn on the notification bell i think i think i know which days i'm going to post i think i'm going to post on sundays yeah i think i'm going to post on sundays anyway so i asked my followers on instagram to ask me questions and also my contacts on whatsapp to ask me questions so i wrote them all down here because i'm using my phone to shoot this video so yeah this is just to give you more insight as to who melissa is and also to answer questions that you have interest in and you would like me to answer so yeah let's start with the video number one what is your full name this person did not watch the first video <laughs> but anyway my full name is pilasande melissa hoboji how old are you and when is your birthday i am 27 years old i'm like doing this to 30s i'm literally knocking i am 27 years old and i was born on the 25th of march i'm an heiress baby and i was born in autumn according to south african seasons but here in in asia um march is spring so yeah there's also that and what is your favorite food anything with meat anything with meat i love it uh, i love meat and also when it comes to south african meals i love umpagoko oh i love umpagoko so much i can eat umpagoko each and every day and i will not get tired of it as long as there will be meat after that then we are good to go and yeah it's so sad that i don't get to eat umpagoko because i haven't been able to find amasi here i don't think we do have amasi in this country so yeah i miss having umpagoko are you a people's person i'd like to think that i am because you put me in a group of people best believe i will mingle and i will try at most best to get to know those people and vibe with them but also i am very sensitive to vibes so if the vibes are not vibing yeah i will not vibe but i i am also am a shy and a very awkward person especially around people that i do not know so it takes so much for me to approach people and in many times i just end up being in my girl show and not say anything you'll see me smile here and there but whenever people come and approach me and they have conversations with me i'm always open to that so i think i am a people's person it's just that i can be shy and awkward around people that i'm not familiar with question number five what is your favorite thing to do number one travel i love to travel that's one of the reasons i moved to asia i wanted to be able to travel and it's so easy traveling here oh my goodness it's so easy and i love it it's just that i do not have the time if i had the time and the money i would do it more often but yeah and also i love spending time with family i love spending time with friends i love get um you know doing little cute girl things getting um doing makeup together dressing up and going to try out new restaurant exploring spaces and you know just being a girl girl you know a girly girl i love that question number six have you made a career path oh my goodness that is a very difficult question to answer because i'm just living in the moment i never thought i would be a teacher <laughs> i remember in uni when my friends were some of my friends were doing pgce and yeah pgce i was like no i'm not gonna do pgce because i don't think i'd be a good teacher 
but life has put me here and i've been enjoying it would i ever go back to what i started for absolutely yes i would if i were to get a good job i would go back um i didn't when when i moved to asia to teach i didn't move to make this a permanent thing so i hope that one day even if it's like next year even if it's that the next the, the year after that i would like to go back and actually do what i studied for but if that doesn't happen i will not be too sad about it because i am enjoying what i'm doing currently would i want to teach for the rest of my life how to the no but at the moment i'm enjoying it and i'm trying to level my self up and also to have more skills and more knowledge to be a better teacher at this point in time yeah how long was your longest relationship I okay. <laughs> so i'm drinking grapefruit tea my longest relationship my longest relationship was almost three years if not three yeah it was two years and a half or three years i don't remember but it, it, it wasn't more than three years that i know of what was your favorite subject in high school my favorite subject in high school was history and life sciences oh my goodness i think the teachers who taught me those subjects made me enjoy them and i used to pass them very well and kudos to them i really enjoyed history and life sciences and they history particularly i feel like history is the most subject that i enjoyed because i just loved learning about different countries about the history of countries history of my country and how the history influenced how things are today you know that was just so fascinating for me so i really did enjoy history and life sciences the teacher made me love like love life sciences hmm. number nine do you prefer city or country definitely city <laughs> because life is easier in the city you know you can okay let me not say life is easier but a lot of things are accessible in the city as opposed to country i'm currently living in countryside in korea and there's just certain things that i'm unable to access because i'm in a countryside whereas people who are in a city have more access to things because there's just a lot that is being offered in the city so that's why i would pre um, prefer a city what are your pet peeves question number 10 one people who chew with their mouth open like why are you doing that why are you not closing your mouth and people who make that mwah, mwah sound when they they chew a moment of silence for those people why why do you do that an old person a grown adult who makes sounds and doesn't close their mouth when they eat i'm judging you and people who don't respect time like someone who will say let's meet at two and they arrive at five i hate people who do that i hate it so much because i'm always on time i want people to respect my time because i always respect people's time so if you're not respecting my time and you arrive three hours late or two hours late or even an hour late i'm gonna be pissed yeah i have a lot of pet peeve minus just that i don't want to like deep dig deep into them right now um question number 11 social media platform you use the most definitely tiktok i'm always on tiktok because you know tiktok guarantees me a good laugh i'm going to laugh i know if i'm on tiktok i'm definitely going to laugh so i love that um tea or coffee tea 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 do you have siblings yes from my dad's side 
um, I'm the only child from my mom and then I have a little brother and a little sister that I love so much from my dad so yeah I do have two siblings are you single or taken mm -hmm. I'm single taken <laughs> I, hmm, I don't know. I really don't know. I think I'm single, but I'm mingling. Yeah, let's just put it like that. If you would live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Definitely somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Asia is a short term thing. I wouldn't want to settle in Asia unless I'm married an Asian person. But that's highly unlikely but um i would like to end up settling in europe i've always wanted to settle in in the uk london specifically but how the economy is structured there um unless i find a rich husband but i've also been having a growing interest towards germany so i really love to um to settle somewhere in europe i love the european um continent and i wouldn't mind settling um either in the uk germany spain italy yeah hopefully i find myself a european man who's rich um question number 16 which parent do you resemble the most so physically my dad yeah physically my dad even though i'm grateful i didn't take his height because homeboy was short <laughs> and i'm not tall either I'm, I'm average but i'm so happy i'm not short so i think physically i resemble my dad but in terms of person personality and the ways of thinking i think my mom and also i had a very short time with my dad because he passed away when i was doing grade six so i didn't really know him very well so i wouldn't say much about me taking any of his personality traits but i've noticed as the more i grew up i mo i noticed so much of my mom's personality traits from myself like yeah i, I noticed so much my mother gets annoyed so easily i get annoyed so easily <laughs> my mom is very strict like she likes things to be in line and i'm like that and um yeah man th there's a lot there really is a lot i think i resemble physically my dad but personally to wise i think my mom okay now these are the questions that are related to me living in korea and my experiences of living in korea so what's been the best thing you've liked in korea and asia the convenience oh my goodness the convenience transport is convenient buying things online everything about this country is very convenient and i can order anything and it will arrive later on in the day later on in the day and also how accessible is and also the technology in this country is amazing i sometimes look at all the resources and all the technology that we have at work and how it makes teaching for us for teachers so easy and they're like i wish this is something we had in south africa yeah i think the best things that i love about korea and asia is convenience is accessibility is the technology and also living in a first world country like this is a first world country so that on its own is is a win for me what's your favorite food so far i think i've answered favorite food but i think maybe this person was asking in relation to korea i would say my favorite food in korea is dakbogi um janjang yang i will not pronounce them as um how koreans pronounce them but i will try it's dog boogie it's jajam yang i love bibimbap as well and um some yopsal which is korean barbecue love it so much 
uh, kimchi jjigae, which is like a stew that has kimchi. Um, wow, they have good food in Korea, I will not lie. I enjoy Korean food, most of it, I really do. Tell us about your experience in another country. My babe, which country? <laughs> Which one? Because I'm collecting stamps. Which one? Which experience? Which country do you want me to speak of? Because I've been traveling. <laughs> but maybe asking about Korea. Um, wow. It, 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 it has pros. It has cons um i think pros are the ones that i mentioned um with question number 17 what's 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 been the best thing you've liked in korea and also you know being able to make my own money and um experience i'm not answering experience okay so experience i'm living in a non english speaking country so that is very difficult the language barrier is huge wow it's bad and i live in a countryside or rural city as i've mentioned so a lot of people who live here are people who are very old excuse me it's all people who know zero english words so it becomes so difficult even when you go shopping because people do not understand you and for the longest time even now i don't understand most of the things you know and transport you know in in buses in trains and all of that but the nice thing is that there is a translation app that we use which is a lifesaver even though it won't necessarily translate everything to the core or will yeah, yeah 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 but it does help and also work wise this is an experience work wise it becomes so awkward and challenging working with people who do not understand a language that you speak or who you don't have a mutual language with because also learning Korean. there's a question about learning um a foreign language i'll tie i'll tie this in, in in this question learning korean has been so difficult for me i will not lie because one korea um they have their own alphabet and their alphabets miss a lot of the alphabets that we know in the in the roman alphabet so yeah yo guys it's hard it really is hard for me to learn korean i try i really really try but it is very difficult but i will not stop so overall experience has been good i will say but there are instances where i'm like them it's so difficult because of the language barrier because i'm different you know people will stay at you i know you've heard this from other people who live in asia people will stay at you and for me, it, it hasn't been a situation where people stare at me with disgust or it's racism or anything of that sort. No, they stare because they are like, wow. I've heard old people stop me to ask to touch my hair, especially when I had braids. They were like, wow. It was mind blowing to them. So and i never take any of that negative because i haven't had a situation where it's done in a negative light or in a negative way so yeah being different and being black it's a lot it's a lot yeah it's a lot what did you study in uni for undergrad i studied sociology psychology politics and international relations i triple majored in those subject and then for for my honors and my masters i did development studies yeah so that's why i'm like if i were to be given um an opportunity to go back and, and do something related to that because i was very passionate about development studies working with ngos and all those kind of things i would take it 
it's just that do i want to go back to south african though i don't know <laughs> it's funny because the next question is will you ever come back to south africa um i mean south africa is home will i come back maybe to visit i right now i do not have plans to come back to south africa unless i'm offered an amazing job offer then i'll definitely come back and it's a good paying job because i mean the salaries in korea in asia are high so it would have to be something that's above that and also i do not have experience working in south africa especially in my field so that will be highly unlikely so i don't know i do not plan to come back anytime soon but that's not to say i will never come back but i will come to visit though hardest thing about living abroad missing family whoa wow not having family around not seeing my mom yeah sometimes there are days where i just break down and cry because i'm like i miss my family i miss my mother and my mom is my best friend so not having that physical access to her yeah it can be heartbreaking at times and also missing out on a lot of things that are happening at home especially when it comes to family and losing family members and there's nothing that you can do in january i lost my grandmother i couldn't go and attend the funeral um and that broke my heart even now when i think uh, when i think about it i just get emotional because that lady literally raised us all of my cousins she raised us so she was the primary caregiver to all of us you know that setup where mothers leave children with their grandparents that was the situation with me and my cousin i i think from grade r to grade four i lived with my grandparents and then grade five my mother took me so that i could live with her because she was like you're a girl you're growing up yeah you know come live with me now so my grandmother raised us you know and not being able to be there to say my final goodbyes was the hardest thing and i don't think it has sunk in that she's not there for me it's like oh she's like everyone else in south africa and when i go home i'll see her and i constantly have to remind myself that and prepare myself that when you go to south africa grandma will not be there you know and i even i was i having a conversation with my mom or my my cousin i was like i hope you guys and do not like side eye me when i come home and i'm going through the emotions all over again because I think that's when the reality will kick in that this person is not there anymore. Yes, when I left, she was sick, but she had gotten really better. Even in December, she was attending Imiki and all that. She was okay. And then in January, yeah. Yeah. So those are the like some of the hardest things where you're missing out on funerals. Um, you're missing out on a lot at home. And not having family like spending special holidays that you would normally spend with family back home now you're not spending them with family wow my first christmas in korea that was my first christmas not spending with family and i will tell you it was very emotional if at least i had friends that i spent with but still it wasn't as how i was how i'm used to spending my christmas tell us more about your childhood um childhood i for the okay so i was raised by my grandparents and my mother and my father passed away as i've mentioned already so early in our lives which i don't understand why god did that but it's okay so um i grew up with my cousins so even though i'm the only child from my mom i never really felt like i was the only child i think that's why i don't have the only child syndromes that people normally talk about uh i'm not a selfish person i sharing is caring 
and I love having other people around. I wish I had siblings, more siblings, especially from my mom's side. Because even though I have siblings from my dad, we didn't grow up in the same household. They lived with their mom and I lived with my mom. But we would but we'd always come together during school holidays, which was always amazing. But I really wish I had, my mom had more kids. But girl was like, I ain't doing that. One is enough for me. And yeah, that was a decision. I'm not too mad at it, but I'm still mad at it. <laughs> okay guys I've, I've covered all the questions yeah i've covered all the questions yeah i hope this kind of like give you insight as to the kind of person that i am and what i'm all about and also with the questions about living in korea and asia i will keep on giving you videos like that because i'm still here i'm still going to be here for for a while so i will keep on like giving you different lenses of my experiences in korea so if you feel like i didn't answer a lot when it comes to that don't worry do not worry this video was um about me I, um giving you a picture of who i am yep thank you very much don't forget to like to subscribe to share turn off the notification bell and make other people aware of this channel and there's more exciting stuff coming up so do not miss out and tell other people to come join so that they don't miss out as well thank you so much thank you so much thank you for watching see you on the next video bye